six steps. You start with the labor market, you deal with career and talent mobility, you focus on competency standards, which is actually the very core of everything that we do. Then you look at work, what, what is work in the global world. You look at professional development, uh, which is uh, about teaching and training, and then of course professional credibility, which is the key to uh, being mobile in the world. And so what I would like to do is run through these because they involve uh, a series of activities. I will focus on supply chain logistics because that's what I somewhat know. Um, but when I, I am going through this, think of productivity and where does it fit. Uh, think of um, uh, finance and banking. Think of any of the others that I have mentioned. So labor market is really about expertise. All right? The supply chain labor market is about a certain uh, set of expertise. Talent mobility is about careers. Uh, competency standards is SKAs. If you've never seen this acronym, it's skills, knowledge, and aptitude. All right, we, uh, in an education context, focus on knowledge. But skills, which is an applied approach, and aptitude is about quality and credibility. So it's no longer just enough to have uh, knowledge. It's, as I say to a group, to most groups, it's not what you know that's important. It's what you do with what you know that's important. And that's where the skill SKA context uh, uh, comes out. Then, of course, we have jobs in a very traditional but actually expanded sense, training and then certification. Let's look, let's look at the labor market in, the, in terms of supply chain logistics. I love to use this quotation because it dates to 1994. This is when globalization actually began to emerge as a reality that we all face now and we assume. But in its application to supply chain logistics, this is what was identified in Fortune magazine in 1994. Think of supply chain and logistics management as nothing less than the re-engineering of the entire economy. Now this is big picture thinking. One convoluted chain at a time. Once you start reconceptualizing your company as a, as a collection of business processes, this was the emergence of process thinking in the field of logistics in the 1990s. It was functional and silo. Process was the emerging reality in the late 20th, 20th century. All right. It becomes dauntingly clear that those processes extend beyond the portals of any one building, the boundaries of any one corporation, and the borders of any one country. So as we think of productivity and productivity processes, it's not just what happens within the four walls of an operation. It's the connectivity to suppliers, customers, the, the, um, the community at large, and so on and so on. It's, as, we, as one of our speakers said, multi-valued, multiple uh, um, uh, uh, factors. As the economy changes, as competition becomes more global, it's no longer co company versus company or product versus product, it's supply chain versus supply chain. Uh, think of that. That's a, that's a pretty critical statement. It's not the product, it's whether it's on the shelf that's the key. That's a redefinition of competition. The seriousness of which is quite significant especially as we look at our own companies and how we run our companies. This is a traditional uh, process approach to logistics. Logistics is defined as those series of, of actions and activities uh, in order to uh, govern or manage the flow of goods, information, and money from source to customer. And there are multiple inputs in terms of functionalities, purchasing, production planning, if you're in a, in a manufacturing world, uh, distribution, warehousing, inventory control, so on and so forth. And there are multiple players. Once again, we have uh, layers of complexity here. Not, comp uh, not complication, but complexity. The difference between those two. We have manufacturers, wholesalers, retailers on the one hand. Those are the users. And then we have providers, carriers, forwarders, and so on and so forth. Having said that, that's what we were facing in the 90s. This is what we face in the 21st century. This is the strategic approach to supply chain logistics. It isn't just process flow. It's bigger than that. It's about value creation, delivering, value, uh, delivering on the value proposition of the company. That is primary. This is my pyramid, by the way.
uh, which I stole from uh, A.T. Carney, uh, from, uh, so I, I do steal. Uh, and it isn't just uh, about value that you can deliver, it's about inter-organizational management, and that's where your network channel, uh, your network strategy is dealing with your suppliers in, in, in partnership relationships. It's also about channel design, so upstream, downstream. This is core to how you do supply chain. And then you have the process right in the middle. There's logistics, traditional. Procurement, asset management, distribution, transportation. And then you have the enablers. All right, the enablers at the bottom. Facilities, capital investments, organizational structure, policies, IT. All right. This is the world that we were facing at the end of the 20th century and going into the 21st century as globalization became reality. It has emerged that way. We had to handle this. How do we prepare people to live in this kind, succeed in their careers in this kind of world? So what do careers look like in supply chain logistics? Interestingly enough, they look like this. <laughs> Don't try to read it. It's not even possible. Uh, it's about mobility. What you'll see is, is these lines and these little bouncing balls back and forth. Contemporary careers today in a globalized world is not from bottom to top as if you're going to do a vertical movement into the sea level. Sorry, young people here, don't even think of it. It ain't going to happen. All right? It's about transitioning left to right. It's about multiple experiences. It's about lateral movements. It's about international experiences. It's about cross-functional experiences. The more you can do, on the way up, quote unquote, the better off you are. It's about honing skills through experience. It's not about what you know, it's about what you do with what you know. We've also noticed that um, when we, be we, we begin to look at career ho horizons, um, some of our, by the way, a lot of this comes from our uh, consulting with uh, industry people, so we didn't make this up. So much like what you guys did, this is what we did. Um, uh, uh, we broke the uh, career levels down into something that you are very familiar with, executive, management, supervisory, and tactical or operational. Uh, this is standard. Almost any labor market looks like this. Uh, planning horizons uh, are uh, zero to two weeks at the operational level, zero to three months at the supervisory level, three months to two years at management, and two years plus at the executive level. Uh, interesting insight from one of our executives uh, uh, was it isn't the decision that's important, it's the impact of the decision if it goes awry, if it goes wrong. I thought that's interesting. So uh, at an operational level, the viability of a transaction may blow up in your face. At a supervisory level, a key business process might blow up in your face. Management, your business unit might die. Interesting. Of course, at the executive level, the entire organization might disappear. So it's about responsibility. And so now we get to competency standards. It's key to us to deal with competency standards. It's the whole basis of everything we do at the Logistics Institute. And while, yes, I did steal this from Mike and I did a few changes, I just call it the uh, Grinsby Institute competency grid, and I cleaned it up so it didn't say things I didn't want it to say. Um, <laughs>